Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. We are basically, myself and Rob, once again, uh, we are just basically going to do a video on who we think has just done the, the you know, the best transfer so far of the uh, League of Ireland transfer window. Um, suppose we, we, we'll kind of kick it off. Cork. I haven't done amazing, but I think Dan Byrne is a very, or Dan, Dan Casey, Casey, sorry, is a, is a very, you know, big signing for them and one that they had to make sure to lock down. I mean, if they can keep a core defence of himself and Sean McLaughlin, I think that, you know, they they won't concede too many goals next year. I think the only problem is up the other end. If they don't get someone in, they might not be scoring a lot. But what do you think about Casey? I think he was fabulous at Bowles last year. And yeah, I think if yeah. anyone if anyone actually watched their... Uh, he team was our season. outside show for the yeah. defence. You know, I know, yeah, he's a smashing sign for them, though. Said he had a very good season last year at Bowles and got the move to full time football in Cork off the back of it. So, yeah, I think he's been a smashing sign for Cork, but then it's it's just the rest of the pitch. I think they're struggling, like, you know, losing Sadler. Barry McNamee is gone. Um, yeah, he's not, gone back to Derry. Derry. I think Dame Delaney, they let him go. They terminated his contract. Um, Seems to be he wasn't getting on with Caulfield, I read, but uh, I, as I say, I don't, don't know personally. Yeah, so yeah, I think. It's actually surprising. Yeah, he's yeah, a bit of a spiky character to hold politely. But I think, I think what I found strange with Cork when they announced before the end of last season that they cut the budget by three hundred grand. You're just like, it's a bit odd, like you know, because. But anyway, but um, yeah, you can see that like now in their signings, like like last year they went out to try and consolidate being champions by bringing in like the likes of McNamee and a couple of other players to strengthen their squad. Like, it seems like they signed every right back in the country at one point as well. Like, yeah. But, but yeah, but this season seems to be totally different. You know, they've only signed, I think, four players. And, you know, when you're standout signing as a centre half, like, and you need, I think it speaks, I don't think it bodes well for them coming into the new season, and especially when we move on to the other teams that you yeah. think will be there. But as well as that, like, even, even you know, Stephen Beattie's gone. He was like a mate. Yeah, right back back as well. Him, yeah. He's gone to America today, actually. It was all over the social media. Mm -hmm. um, and then, obviously, Kieran Sadler, big loss in terms of goals, creativity. You know, I think he'll go on to have a, a decent uh, time of it at Doncaster and, and, and hopefully progresses. But, yeah, as you say, I mean, may, well, may, maybe they could be looking at maybe shifting one of those lads across to right back if needs be as well, because he seems to be a bit like Martin O'Neill in that sense of uh, if you can play defence, we'll put you somewhere in defence, even if it's not your natural position. Yeah. But well, he's young enough to do it anyway, Casey, or McLaughlin if they need to. Um, I'd say it'd be more so, like, just having watched the two of them, I'd say it'd be more likely to be McLaughlin. He just seems to be a bit more mobile, whereas... Yeah. But Casey's a good player, but I don't. I couldn't really see. He's him very that. good in the air. Yeah, I don't think he. You'd know all about that, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's really two goals against Rovers first derby, but um, yeah, I don't um. Sorry, Rovers. No. It's grand. He supports shells. <laughs> but um, who will be coming to? Yeah, but yeah. So like defensively, you say Cork will be solid enough, as you said. And McLaughlin and Casey is a good young centre has and a resource man Shane Griffin, who's not. Bad player, and then right back. He got a lot of stick last season, but yeah, I don't think he's that bad. Then at right back, they have Daryl Horgan's younger brother, Colm Horgan, who's a good player. So they've at least a solid defense, but yeah, I think they'll really want to like it's the other end of the pitch, as you we said off air because we do that as well. But um, that I think they'll struggle because you said Lewis and Sadler, who was. Well, 15, 16 league goals last season, and then yeah, that's just league goals. And then who was the near Cummins? But then, if Cummins isn't getting the supply because they lost Sadler and McInerney, that's two creative players gone. And like Shepard's a good player. He's a like you know he's like a dirt cow. He'll work himself into the ground. He'll you know you know he's just one of those types of players. He'll be a bad but he's not the most creative in the world. So unless yeah. they get someone at that end of the pitch, I think I think it could be. Not a tough season for them. They're obviously not going to be threatened for it's relegation. But to be I where think, they were last I think season. mid table, like based on what the other clubs have done so far. So far, yeah, sure. that's it. So, but then again, like you know, the season's not not a million miles away either. You know, so yeah. they want to get the finger out if they want to bring in other. Play they signed some fella from Limerick actually. Sorry, Dara Rains for from amateur football in Limerick. But can't tell yeah. you anything about. Yeah, don't know. Know. But if you so, do know anything about, let us know in the comments. Uh, moving on to Dundalk, Dan O'Kelly, I think is a fantastic sign. Yeah. Um, I think he's a trade up on Dylan Conley personally. Okay. Um, how so? 
Um, I just think he has more strings to his bow than Dylan Conley. Like I think, I think even at Bray, like once I say one thing, I just when I first seen him play for Bray, I didn't think he was up to much. But then once he got used to the level, you know, he started scoring goals and he went to bows and really took it up another level. You know, like I think he 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 can score goals. He's quick. He can cross the ball. You know, he has he can do whatever that you want in a winger. You know, and his movement is great as well off the ball. So yeah, that's why I think with Dylan Conley, he's like, I don't, like, obviously he's a good player, but I think he's just one-dimensional, you know, like, as he's just like an out-and-out -out winger, whereas he'll try and be a fellow with pace and whip a ball in, whereas at least with Kelly, like, he's a bit more craft and guile about him and offers a goal try. Yeah, and then, I, I totally agree with you in regards to Kelly, I thought, yeah, once he went to, once, once he got it found his feet, he just went on to be, to look really <laughs> unbelievable, really. And, you know, there's no, no reason why Bolts and, you know, we're coming in looking at him. And I was kind of happy in the sense that, that Dundalk got him because it kind of adds to their repertoire and just kind of, they, they're they going to need to push on again because there's other teams strengthening around them and obviously they want to stay at the top. But they managed to keep a lot of their players too, Yeah, that's, which is a big thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, I think you look at Dundalk starting team next season, I think, with the I think the they could pretty much be the same team probably that started last season with the maybe Kelly will probably start wide right and it'd be interesting to see the goalkeeping situation with them yeah, signing Aaron. Just gonna get 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 to McCrary there. McCrary, like you know, he was playing in with Warren Point and I think that was probably a level no disrespect to the league up the north, like but well, even in our league there's players that should should be playing at a higher standard, like but yeah, I think with yeah. him it's not so long ago he was in the Ireland squad for like the friendly against Turkey, you know. So he's, he has a big reputation. So it'll be interesting to see if he can oust Gary Rogers and what they think of him up there, like you know. Yeah. And then today you see Andy Boyle could be going back there, which it just doesn't bode well for other teams in the league. You know, if you have yeah, your centre halves or Dan, four solid centre backs, like you have Dan Cleary, Sean Hoare, Brian okay. Garland, and Andy Boyle. Like if if he signs them, like those four would walk into most teams in the league. Like probably would start for every other team in the league. You know, and yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So and then they're linked with Sean Murray, the young lad used to know former youth international, which was a at one point was highly rated at Watford, you know, I think he played a good few games in the championship, so it'll be interesting to see if they manage to bring him in, because they probably need another midfielder to replace Stephen O'Donnell, who unfortunately hung up his boots. Yeah. yeah who, shout out to him if he's watching the show, even, even when he was at Rovers, I always thought he was a smashing player, so. Yeah. Well, kind of moving on then to Rovers, um, McAniff, Jack Byrne, Two fantastic midfielders. Mm. Uh, how do you how do you think the fair? Do you think do you think that Jack Byrne? I don't know if you if you were at the game against Bray the other day. No, I wasn't. But I'll be uh, at the matches this weekend, so hopefully I'll get a better look at him. Yeah, um, I don't know how he performed. Rovers fans do tell us in the comments and uh, Aaron McIniff. But you know, I, I even I even put up a picture there the other day from their first game. The three midfield three, it was like Brandon Kavanagh. It was against Luke and was it? I can't yeah, they played yeah, Luke, yeah. but the three of them were warming up, so it was McIniff, uh, Brandon Kavanagh and mm. Jack Brown. I was like, Well that midfield three could be frightening if if they're, you know, firing on all cylinders. Yeah, and then you have another midfield three of Aaron Boulder, Ronan Finn and Greg Boulder, you know. Yeah. I think the main thing for Rovers as a Rovers fan is how do you keep them all happy? Because you said you have Greg Boulder, Aaron Boulder, Finn, McIniff, and Jack Byrne. You, like, they're five central players. And then you could throw Sam Bowen into the mix. Who yeah. I think he's a good young player. Yeah. yeah, he's good. He's only, he's only 20 as well. But, yeah, I think for always, like, the, with McIniff, what he'll bring is a goal trail. Because he's consistent. I think in two years ago, he scored 15 league goals. And last season, he scored 10, I think, maybe. Yeah. You can correct Double me if I'm twice. wrong, you know, but, like, and I think, that's, I think that's like especially if Rovers aren't gonna be able to get in, bring in a an out and out goal scorer, that like the goals from midfield will be key. Yeah. So a player of his quality, and will be, yeah, you know, you probably you have to start and probably. Will, it's just a matter of where do you fit everyone else in. And same with Jack Byrne, like, it, like I'm sure he could assign for someone else, but as an agent has ties with Rovers and Graham Barrett, so. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see where he fits in because he's like one of those players, like based off what he did in Holland and 
in patches in the lower leagues in England, like ability wise, he should be playing at a higher standard. Yeah. So just be interesting to see then. Yeah. He can we, also play out wide, I believe. So I think centrally would be his best position. Yeah. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how. I got how how they line up with him in the team. Yeah, but I still think it's a fan of the club without being two boys as well. I think they still need a got a center, another centre forward because outside of the hand cards, Dean Dillon, Sean Boyd, and. Oh, there's someone else I can't think of off the top of my head. Oh, what? And there's another young lad, oh, Dean Williams. Oh, like they're all like 18, 19, you know, and then Dan Carr is the more, most experienced of the four, you yeah. know. So I think they just need another experienced player up top, and they might be another centre half, like. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that's fair enough in regards to, to Rovers and uh, Sligo, Ronald Murray coming from the dock. Yeah, it's a good sign. What did you make of him? Because I, I know he didn't score a lot of goals last year, but like Galway didn't the year before he did. I think it's just kind of unlucky in a sense that he's a Galway native. Fair uh, about, yeah, pa, pa Hogan. Galwegian, is that what they call yeah. it down there? I, I don't know. Out west. But uh, yeah, yeah. Pat Tottenham, by the way. Um, yeah, I, just, I think he was kind of ousted in that respect. I think every striker was. I mean, Hogan had no pre season or nothing, he just came in there, boom. And just goals, 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 goals. Yeah. And I think when he came on, like they were when they did play him, he was usually kind of playing off the main striker. Yeah, it was like a split striker well. type of thing, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. he so was he never was kind of up with him. Yeah, he was yeah, just kind of behind him. Yeah, yeah, so I think. Yeah, so I think for Sligo, he's going to be the main man up top because obviously Mike Jennings left, which we'll come mm. on to. And Adam Morgan. And Adam, yeah, well, you could think that was a disaster in hindsight yeah. for them. But yeah, I think if he gets the service, like you know, he scored things. He scored, yeah, he scored goals for Galway, and Galway got relegated. So if he's, yeah, I think he'll do a job for them and get a few goals. Like yeah, and then you were you were fairly impressed with Dunleavy, Dunleavy sorry, from uh, Cork on there. Yeah, because I think up until he's just been unfortunately he's just been knackered with injuries, you know. But before he got injured, any time he played, he was always a class player, you know, really ball playing centre half, you know, had a lot quality about him, you know. So I think if he stays fit at Sligo, he'll be. A smashing sign because they have the other another chap from Donegal, Callan McFadden. Yeah, I think Kyle, he's yeah, he's yeah I think he's a very captain, yeah. I think he's a very good player as well. So the two of them, like you know, that's the good bedrock bedrock of a good defense. Um, especially Liam Buckley likes to play out from the back. So you have two fellas there that are comfortable on the ball, and then if you can tighten up the defensive side of it as well, like I think they like Cork will have a good foundation. But I think overall their squad might just be they might need to improve in other areas. Yeah, um, a team that have done quite well. Um, you probably argue that they've done the best business is St. Pat's. Yeah, I'd say by far, especially after who they and today. signing today, like Chris Forrester, like and Reese McCabe. Like, haven't we were just chatting beforehand? I know you were abroad for living for a while when Forrester was in his palm, but honestly, he's probably one of those players. Like, you know, there's very like just like Pat McCart, there's one. And he'd be another where you just pay in to watch. Joey and Doe. Joey and Doe is another one, you know. He's just sit, like, you know, you can leave it just going, like, see, I've only seen it. Wes Hill. And he just, I forget what match it was, but when he was on the 18 yard box and the keeper just came out to the six yard box and he chipped him. You're just, you're just watching him and you're like, Jesus, lads, this lad's just. Yeah, I want him in my team. And he's one of those players as well. Like, I'm always critical of some of these players that, like, you know, they'll do it against, like, the weaker teams in the league, but. Any time he played against Rovers, he was always a threat. He always done something. He knew that if he switched off for a second, he'd hurt you. Like either score a goal or set up a goal. So I think with Pat signing him and then Reese McCabe, he'd be more of a player to kind of like you know box to box guy. Like the two of them are good footballers, and then you throw in Mikey Drennan up front, just smashing signing. Shaw. Gary Shaw, yeah, he's not bad. He's a good sign as well, and then. At the back, they brought in Dave Webster. He was a good, solid player. Like he's did a well at Rovers. Show too. Yeah, I think Pat's, in my opinion, done the best business by far. Like yeah, um, it's gonna, sorry, Brandon Mila as well. You yeah, know, from Rovers. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about him because, you know, the year before last, people were telling him to be one of the best players in the league. Hmm. And then, like, what happened to him last season? It's hard to know. Like I think. Um, and all a lot of players thrive off confidence, but I think for him, definitely, because I think when he first signed for hours, I remember watching him because he signed from Bluebell. He was like kind of a bit like Dan Kelly, whereas like you know he just maybe took a while to get used to the level or pace of it. But once he did, he was like a oh, smashing player. You know, 
like scoring 20 30 yard goals left foot right foot can be a player like yeah but yeah i don't know what happened for him at rovers like maybe just the manager didn't fancy him and then like you know like i think he's a player that needs to be in the team week in week out to like you know we get a run of games and get confidence and then when he he's con- when he's when he has that you see the best of him yeah because there was times like you know sure it was like him and Richie Tell, like he was like when Richie Tell left, yeah, as you said, or saying he'd be the next one, but like, yeah, I don't know why it happened to one with Robert. But even at that, when he still played for Robert, he still managed to score a couple of goals, even though he wasn't in the team as much as he, in my opinion, he probably should have been. Like, so I think, in my, I think it could be a turn out to be a bad bit of business to get rid of him. Like, mm. if you were going at it now, what position would you say Pats could finish? If you were right now, just go into your head off the top of my head. Going to head. Third. Third ones. That's that's that's. that's like, could that be a massive jump? Because the the past. Well, but they years... weren't they weren't too far last season. I was watching. I was at a lot of games in Richmond Park, and they weren't million miles away from you know actually beating teams, and they just weren't scoring goals, and that was the biggest issue. He seems to have addressed that. Because he's brought in Drennan. a lot of attacking forwards. Yeah. He resigned Dean Clark as well, so they do have a. I know they let go of Ryan and um, Brennan, but you know, arguably. Replace some better players. Yeah, and it, yeah, and yeah, I think that's where they str- it struggled last season. It was like it's hard to like they're a funny one because I think at points last year they looked as you said really good. Like you know, then like you know, I think once they kind of went behind, I think the heads were likely to drop. But mm. well, they lost a lot of players. Like obviously, with Colin Brown, Killian yeah. Brown, a lot of like older characters, I suppose you could say. Um, you know, experienced stuff like that. Then uh, I don't know what's going on with Vega. Did he retire? I heard there was rumours he was retiring. Did he retire? I don't know. I, um, I actually see him around UCD. I think he's a student there. So actually, my one day just you know on the series, I'll see, ask him what how the form is and what he's doing because mm. yeah, it's an interest because yeah, I know he was knackered last year. He got a bad injury, but yeah, I don't know if he's retired or is he still at Pats. Yeah, because he hasn't seen that. Like, that's you know, what I mean about strikers. Like, because it's a bit like what's going on there, but. Um, Waterford last year in the Premier Division um, Maxim Quogan JJ Looney and I think Delaney yeah I think I think you know obviously they got rid of well, well they didn't get rid of him so he left um, obviously wanted to come back to Dublin I think he found that the trekking up and down to Waterford yeah. was hard for him because he was in college as well mm-hmm. um, and I think the girlfriend probably had a say too that's you know yourself but uh, just kind of qu- quickly on them I think Maxine Quogan class player. He went, I think he went up north, but he had offers to kind of go around elsewhere. Then he's after coming back, basically used to up north. Then now he's at Waterford. I think is a good, great move from. He's going to play European football. Um, he was heavily involved in the first part of UCD's run uh, for promotion last year, and then obviously JJ Loney. I mean. I've made no secret of the fact of how much I think he's a class player. Yeah, he's a very good player. And I know Delaney had a bit, a bit of a stink at, at Cork, but I think... Only to, to be fair to Delaney, like, you know, I think it was only the Bowles match where he was... Like, to be fair, he was shocking, like, in that match. But I think, like... Well, I think he came in at a weird time of the season, like, you know, maybe he wasn't yeah, fully just fit. before Europe. And yeah. then he played in Europe, didn't he play against yeah. Rosenberg? And I don't think maybe he wasn't fully fit or, you know, maybe he didn't have that bedding in. Peter Smith, like Joey O'Brien for Rovers last year, you know, I think I think he'll have a big season for Rovers, hopefully, because any time we watch him, I think he's a quality player. But yeah. it's similar in a way. He probably didn't have a full, he didn't have a full pre-season. So maybe at Waterford with a full pre-season and, like, he'll probably be start with them. Like, you probably see why he played at such a high level and was an international for so long. Like, mm. So I think he could be a shrewd bit of business by Alan Reynolds. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear what Cork's fans view uh, on Delaney, like, because I do not, I, I've seen mixed reactions from, uh, about him online. So, any uh, Cork fans or Water Waterford fans for that matter, uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, lastly, I want to touch on shells because they've done amazing business. The Real Madrid at first division. Yeah, yeah, but like, Kieran Kilduff, um, Oscar Brennan, uh, Conan Byrne, Ryan mm-hmm. Brennan. Um, Dan Byrne Dan Byrne you know they've made they've made really really good signings you know and I think part part like I was speaking with 
their CEO last last week in uh, in talk itself, and you know he was going on about you know part of the reasons why they're getting players is because they are part time because they are a Dublin club, um, and they're building for for the future. So they're mm-hmm. building, f- you know. For the Premier Division. Yeah, yes. they're not like signing players just for now. It's they want to keep those players and keep them in, in, in like onwards into into the Premier Division. So the likes of Kieran Kilduff, who was, you know, Cork were offering a lot of money from. Shells could guarantee he was going to be in Dublin. He could go and teach and be a part-time player. Shells training in the evenings suits him after school uh, and his miss. So that's one. Colin Bird, similar. Same as teacher as yeah, well. Yeah, so like, I mean, it makes sense that he's got that podcast as well, yeah. which you won't plug. <laughs> I don't know, the greatest league in the world podcast uh, with uh, Con. Con Murphy. Con Murphy. Fan of the show. Rovers man as Fan well. Fan of the show. Yeah, man, Con. Um, but yeah, uh, so like, in that sense, it works for them. But like, these types of, the types of signs they're making are Premier Division standard, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, as I said to you before we came on, like I think I think they're probably unbackable to win the league. You don't end. speak to me before, come on. <laughs> I'm less than go. Yeah, but I think if they don't win the first division, like ah, there'd be some, some serious quite. I think the only club that can possibly come close to them is Bray. Just because, yeah. actually, one signing that should be worth mentioning that two signs maybe is Keegan, Keegan and Sava. I know, like, Sava's a good goalkeeper, you know. Like, Doesn't so, like me. Doesn't like Paul for reasons that we shan't get into. Just doesn't like me. Yeah. So shouting at me one time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I think Bray, like, you know, but yeah, Bray, those two are good signs for Bray, you know, like. Yeah, and they beat Rowers. Rowers at pre season, lads. Now, no, don't be reading too much into it. I already got a bit of stick off me, mate. That's a Bowles fan. But yeah, I think Shell's done great business, and you think, um, yeah, it should be favourites to go up. And You'd like to think so. Um, obviously. Yeah, football's a funny hell of a Let's sign Wes Houlihan while we're at it as well. Go all out. Yeah. Which, by the way, Wes is in town on Sunday. So make sure you get down to either the uh, Santry, uh, the indoor football dome in Santry, Sportslink. He'll be there between 12 and 2. And if your guys are in Tala and can't make it or have a match earlier that day, he'll be in Tala Astro Park, Greenhills Road, between 4 and 6. Go down, meet him. Sign, lad. sign up to his academy. Become become, we- become Wes Hoolan 2.0. But uh, that's been a, a video. Basically, we wanted to do a video kind of touching over. So we haven't got a chance to do that in regard to the league, and we're kind of eagerly anticipating the league starting now. But uh, I, I actually really enjoyed doing this video. So, um, team minus was it three, two, three weeks? Something like that, yeah. yeah uh, don't forget, actually, any Bose fans to check out our competition that's running on our page till Sunday uh, in regards to the Iron Brew quarter final against East Fife uh, to win tickets check it out on our Instagram and um, yeah. maybe one thing to point out for the clubs that we didn't mention we only discussed transfers that were like kind of big big yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we will do. it's we'll no be... disrespect to any of the other clubs but like yeah you know, it was just best business really best business yeah. the Shells are probably doing best, better business than the clubs you didn't mention but uh, sorry about that yeah but uh, yeah, uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so now and uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. We always like to hear your feedback and uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.